Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd, and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got breaking news coming out from Russia to share with you. So last night, Ukraine launched hundreds of drones into Russia once again, this time targeting the Boris Oglebsk airfield in the Voronezh region of Russia. This is approximately around 300 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. And uh, it looks like we had a massive attack here, as you can see. Lots of fires have broken out all over this airfield in numerous locations. I think we had at least four fires that had broken out. We've got uh, NASA firm satellite monitoring that shows some of the fires that were active at the time during this attack. I'll show you guys that here in just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the Russian Defense Ministry claimed they had intercepted or destroyed 113 Ukrainian drones over four Russian regions last night. So it looks like we had a pretty heavy attack going into Russia with Ukrainian drones. Also last night, Russia attacked Ukraine as well, targeting their energy infrastructure with dozens of drones also. We're going to talk about that later towards the end of this video. Um, and then I've got some things to show you coming out from Kursk as well. Uh, in the Kursk region, in the city of Kerchatov, where we have that nuclear power plant, looks like we had some sort of an attack or an explosion not really sure which one it was, but there was some sort of explosion that happened inside of Kerchatov, very close to the Kursk nuclear power plant, probably about five kilometers away. And we had some reports that were saying it could have been some sort of HIMARS attack from Ukraine, uh, but we really don't know. But definitely looks like some sort of weapons depot inside the city of Kerchatov exploded. I'll show you guys the video footage of that in just a little bit. And I've got a few other things we're going to talk about as well throughout the duration of this video. But first, we're going to start off with this story of this massive attack on the Boris Oglebsk airfield. Okay, I also got a map to show you guys in a little bit where it's located. So let's start off here on the Moscow Times. Ukraine claims drone strike on Russia's Boris Oglebsk airbase, according to reports. Okay, this just came out today. Here's a picture uh, of that attack as we can see a fire that appears here in the background, supposedly at this airbase. Okay. And it says down here, Ukrainian drones struck the Boris Oglebsk Aviation Center in western Russia's Voronezh region overnight, Ukrainian media reported Thursday, citing anonymous security service sources. The targeted base stored uh, guided aerial bombs, Su-35, Su-34, fighter jets, as well as aviation fuel, according to the UNIAN news agency and the news website Liga.net. Okay, so we don't know if any fighter jets were destroyed. We actually don't have any... Um, any proof or any any updates in terms of anything really being destroyed here other than fires very interesting um, as the only video footage that we're able to come up with and uh, and pictures coming out from this area is mainly just fires that have broken out here so there's possible uh, damage to some fighter jets that could have been stored here at the time that it was attacked and also as it says here guided aerial bombs were stored I haven't seen any video footage of any explosions here or anything like that so I'm not sure if any of these stored guided aerial bombs were destroyed. But it says here that's where the enemy bombs Ukrainian territories with guided aerial bombs from. The source was quoted as saying, Boris Oglev's lies 300 kilometers or 186 miles from the border with Ukraine. And the Voronezh region is over 400 kilometers or 248 miles south of Moscow. NASA satellite monitoring showed active fires at multiple locations in the town of Boris Oglebsk including one that matches that of the Boris Oglebsk Air Base. Russia's defense ministry said it had intercepted or destroyed 113 Ukrainian drones over four Russian regions overnight. 25 of the drones were intercepted over the Voronezh region, the Russian military said. The Boris Oglebsk Aviation Center and the nearby Chuklov, I think it's Chuklov, uh, Chukalov, excuse me, uh, Aviation Training Center were previously attacked in August and April. Okay, so this base has come under attack before, at least nearby it, um, pr uh, prior, just several months back. Uh, but looks like it came under attack once again. And obviously, we can see from this video footage, I'll show you guys on full screen here in just a minute. Uh, but definitely, a major fire has broken out at this base. And from what we understand, there was four fires actually that developed after this thing was attacked. Okay, so. Now we're going to hop on over here to X, and I've got a few things that I'm going to show you. So let's pop on over here. War translated Dimitri reports, SBU drones attack the Boris Oglebsk military airfield in Voronezh region, warehouses with cockpits, parking lots for SU-35 and SU-34 aircraft, and aviation fuel storage facilities were hit. Okay, so according to War translated Dimitri, 
He's stating that uh, there actually was some storage facilities that were hit and some parking lots for the Su-35s and 34 aircraft. Now, again, we don't have any reports of any aircraft being destroyed, uh, but who knows? Maybe that information just never made it out, and it's possible we could have had some aircraft that were destroyed. So it says here, the Russians reported air defense activity, numerous drone flights, and explosions at the airfield where satellites recorded four fires. So here's that picture we were looking at earlier, as we can clearly see that fire there in the background behind uh, some sort of building here. So we'll move on uh, to a video now that we got up next. Okay, so this is the video footage that you guys were watching on the waiting screen when you came in. And as we can see, it appears to be a massive fire here, uh, supposedly at the Boris Oglebsk airfield inside of the Voronezh region. And uh, yeah, crazy fire here that's broken out. Okay, so let's move on to our next update. Tendar reports Ukrainian UAVs have struck the Boris Oglebsk airbase once again. Pictures document fires pointing into the direction of the vicinity of the airbase. And the NASA firm's map indicates that besides some surrounding surroundings, the airbase itself is indeed on fire as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, check out some of these pictures here. This picture shows how far away from the border the Boris Oglebsk airfield is from the Ukrainian border near Kharkiv, approximately 338.7 uh, kilometers away. Okay, that's what that map is showing. Here's the NASA firm's map. It's the Fire Information for Resource Management System. So here's the uh, airfield down here. We could definitely see on the right side of the airfield, there happened to be a major fire over here. Now, a lot of their aircraft is stored here on the bottom of this airfield um, on this part of the strip here. So it doesn't look like there was any major fires here, but definitely on the right side of the airfield. We also had a fire that broke off uh, just over here to the right side of the airfield. And then over here closer to Boris Oglebsk, we got two fires that broke out. Potentially, uh, maybe Ukrainian drones were targeting some storage sites over here, just off to the uh, what would be the west of this airfield, okay? So I'll show you guys on another map here in just a little bit. Here's another picture that we saw earlier. And then also, there's the newest photo coming out uh, from the Voronezh region as well, okay, near Boris Oglebs, because we can see massive fires over here uh, taking place in the distance, okay? You can see all that right there. So now I've got this map pulled up to kind of show you guys where this took place at. So here's Ukraine, and then we'll zoom into the Voronezh region over here. It's on the eastern side of the Voronezh region. Here's Boris Oglebsk, the town. It's a pretty small town. And here's the airfield, okay? So this is the airfield. We can see that Russia's got all their warplanes stationed here. Looks like maybe even some Su-34, 35s right here. Um, and so apparently a lot of the fire broke out on this side of the airfield. I'm not sure what it was. It, if it was just the, uh, the grass, if there was some sort of shrubbery fire over here. But definitely with some major fires in this portion of the airfield. And I think we had another fire that broke out over here. Uh, maybe this is what was struck here. There looks like there's some storage containers here. Maybe some small uh, warehouses or storage uh, facilities there. And then a lot of the other fires were breaking out in this area right here as well. I'm not sure what these are. These look like some homes or something. I don't know if these are people that are living here. Uh, or maybe this is part of the airfield. But uh, we also had some fires in this area too. So we have like this warehouse right here as we can see some other buildings here and then uh, uh some a few other warehouses that are storing down here storing things down here so i'm not sure exactly what was uh blown up over here but definitely some fires in this area over here along with the eastern side of the airfield okay so that's a good look at what this airfield looks like it's a pretty good size airfield and again this is where you uh, where russia excuse me launches many of their attacks onto ukraine using guided aerial bombs and apparently they store a lot of them here at this airfield, okay? So let's move on to our next update. Military News UA. Satellite images of the attack by Ukrainian UAVs on the airfield Boris Oglebsk in the Voronezh region have appeared. The footage shows traces of a fire near the runway, okay? So we'll go ahead and check this out. As we can see, definitely some fires have broken out. For sure, even inside of the airfield, we can see right here and here. And then also just on the outskirts of the airfield. So I'm not sure what caught on fire here. I'm assuming it's probably just the shrubbery on the ground. Maybe some of the drones had landed and started some fires nearby. But if you look closely over here, just towards the west of the airfield, you can see there's no black. And then all of a sudden there is when it when it switches uh, 
to the, the newer satellite image, we can see the remnants of some other fires that had broken out just to the west of the airfield over there. So pretty crazy to see that. Again, I wish we had some information showing whether some uh, some of these aircraft may have been destroyed. I mean, it's very possible considering that this fire broke out so close to where some of their aircraft would have been. So if there were any down here on this eastern end of the strip, it's possible they could have been destroyed. So we'll move on to our next update, Igor Sushko. Kursk Offensive, Ukraine stuck a makeshift, uh, struck a makeshift base and munition storage of the uh, Russian fascists in Kurchatov near the Kursk nuclear power plant. Residents appear to be in shock to realize Russian soldiers are hiding among civilian infrastructure. Okay, so there's multiple videos of this coming out on X from different angles, and we don't exactly know what happened here. Some people are saying it was just some sort of explosion. Others are saying that it was struck by HIMARS. But some sort of building here that we can see uh, is clearly on fire and some residents were recording it nearby. And you can even kind of hear some pop sounds in the background, uh, possibly indicating that munitions were stored here. And that's what Igor Sushko is sharing with us. So 25 seconds, take a look, and it's even got some subtitles. Okay, so if you notice here, they're saying uh, you see a lot of soldiers ran out. Um, so maybe this is a like a small base that was being uh, used or at least a storage warehouse for some of their munitions. And if you notice here, they also said it was a terrible strike. Okay, so... I'm assuming maybe this was some sort of strike. Maybe HIMARS actually did hit this building because there was some reports talking about that. Um, and it looks like it was uh, pretty much destroyed for the most part after being hit. And uh, lots of other videos were coming out showing uh, massive explosions here initially and it, what appears to even sound like secondary explosions, okay? So pretty crazy up in the Kirchhoff area. And again, this is very close to the nuclear power plant that's over there. I mean, it's not right next door to it, but I believe it was somewhere around five kilometers away from the Kirchhoff nuclear power plant. And I think the Russians, even on some of their Z channels on Telegram, were coming out and uh, saying that that Ukraine was trying to target the nuclear power plant in Kirchhoff. Obviously, that's been something talked about a lot in the past, that Ukraine might try to target it and blow it up or something like that, create some sort of disaster over there in the Kursk region. Uh, Kursk, Kursk region excuse me. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to wait to see if we get some more information out on this, but there's only a few videos surfacing of this attack online right now. So move on to another update. I wanted to show you guys this. Actually, this came out yesterday from Sprinter Family. Russian military strikes with powerful ODAB 9000 bomb in Vovchansk for the first time. So uh, there's lots of speculation, too, that this bomb being used is one of the most powerful non-nuclear thermobaric bombs that Russia carries, the ODAB 9000. Um, and I believe it's a vacuum bomb. You can see it's very, very powerful and apparently was dropped on Vovchansk recently. Um, and this was video footage coming out all over X and some uh, mainstream news medias are trying to figure out if this actually is an ODAB, uh, ODAB 9000 vacuum bomb. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see if it is, but definitely looks like a very powerful bomb that was dropped over here. I mean, look at that. It literally almost looks like a nuclear bomb went off. Definitely very powerful. And look at how widespread it is too. Definitely destroyed a large portion of Vovchansk, okay? So now also... I want to show you guys this uh, from DW News. Ukraine is closer to NATO than ever before and will continue on the path on this path until you become a member of our alliance. New NATO chief Mark Root said he traveled to Ukraine for the first time uh, for the first official trip since taking the role to send a message. OK, so Mark Root is the new NATO uh, chief taking over for uh, Jen Stoltenberg. And he visited Kiev just today. And I wanted to show you this just 43 seconds of him uh, visiting Volodymyr Zelensky and giving us an update and basically saying that he still stands with the commitments to Ukraine, providing them the necessary weapons that they need, also eventually bringing them into NATO. So take a look. Thank you so much. Okay. You're very welcome. I know. Okay, I had to mm. see you. Good to see you. you but this is my first time here as NATO Secretary General. And it was important to me that I come to Ukraine at the start of my mandate to make crystal clear to you, to the people of Ukraine, and to everyone watching, that NATO stands with Ukraine. 
Ukraine is closer to NATO than ever before and will continue on this path until you become a member of our alliance. NATO stands with Ukraine for your security and for ours. Okay, so I wanted to show you this to let you know that the new uh, Secretary General of NATO taking over for Jen Stoltenberg is still on the same exact page for the most part when it comes to Ukraine, obviously still providing them with the equipment that they need to continue fighting this war along with security. And then also coming out and saying that, uh, you know, Ukraine will eventually join NATO. That's something that he has mentioned many times already. So uh, very big news in regards to that. And also, I wanted to show you this real quick, too. These were some pictures coming out from Vovchansk, as we were just talking about a moment ago, from Victor Victop 55. The battle for Vovchansk is over. There are not even any skeletons of houses left in the city where the infantry of both sides can hide. Since the West ordered Ukraine to fight to the last Ukrainian, Ukraine will simply be wiped off the face of the earth. If the U.S. and NATO want this, they will follow Ukraine. This possibility is quite real. So we've got a few pictures here that show the devastation of this city. I mean, it's just completely destroyed. Look at this, guys. Every time we come back and show this city, it's even more destroyed than it was before. Heavy fighting has been taking place here for months now. Um, and we've seen some of the heaviest bombs being dropped on Vovchansk ever inside of this war with Ukraine. As you can see, just completely leveled to the ground, especially in this area right here. I don't know if these are pictures that were taken after that uh, that thermobaric bomb was dropped, the ODAB 9000, it's possible, um, as uh, definitely everything seems to be completely decimated here. Uh, but this is one of those towns that uh, that Russia tried to push into and take over towards their, what I think, believe I believe it was their second or third attempt to push into the Kharkiv region already, just a few months back. Um, and uh, there's just been heavy fighting here in Vovchansk in the Kharkiv region for a very long time now, okay? And this is the results of the fighting that has been taking place. This, this town, I think, originally had somewhere around 17,000 people, and uh, now it's just basically reduced to ruin. So very sad to see that. A couple more reports to go over here real quick. Kiev Independent, Russian gas giant Gazprom was ranked as the most unprofitable company in Russia last year, ending 2023 with a record net loss of $6.1 billion, Forbes Russia reported on October 3rd. So the reason why I want to show you guys this is this is Russia's uh, gas or major gas company, okay, Gazprom. And they were ranked as most unprofitable company in Russia last year. Isn't that crazy, guys? That's how much damage Ukraine has done to their uh, oil and gas industry, okay? We've reported time and time again, dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, uh, Russian oil and gas uh, facilities, their oil depots, their refineries just being hit all the time with Ukrainian drones and many of them being destroyed. And sometimes, you know, Russia will lose millions or hundreds of millions over the course of days at a time as each of these facilities were hit. So this shows how much damage uh, Russia's economy is taking with all these oil depots coming under attack so frequently. And I'm surprised we haven't heard of any lately. I think the last one we had reported was uh, maybe over a month ago. So I also want to talk about this just briefly. We're not going to go over this whole article, but just some of it. Uh, Ukraine came under attack at the same time while Ukraine was attacking into Russia uh, just in uh, just late last night. So Reuters reports Russia launches major drone attack on Ukraine damages energy infrastructure by Reuters. October 3rd, 2024 was released today. Russian forces launched a major drone attack overnight on 15 Ukrainian regions causing damage to energy infrastructure and residential buildings, authorities said on Thursday. The Ukrainian Air Force said it had shot down 78 out of 105 Russian drones during the assault, with 23 more likely impacted by active electronic jamming. The drones damaged power lines, substations, equipment in Kiev, Odessa, and Ivano-Frankivsk uh, regions in the past 24 hours, Ukraine's energy ministry said on the Telegram messaging app. The attacks caused temporary disruption of railway services in the southern Odessa region, as well as power cuts for uh, for households, excuse me, it said. Odessa Regional Governor Ole Kipper uh, said power had been restored to more than 3,000 consumers in his region following the overnight attack, though a further 2,000 people remained without power. Authorities said they had downed around 15 drones over Kiev and its surrounding and its surroundings during an air alert that lasted over five hours. The central Ukrainian regions of Poltava, 
Uh, Cherkasi, excuse me, and Karovarad all reported minor damage to property. Okay, so nothing extreme over here, but we did have some energy, uh, energy infrastructure being damaged in last night's attack as well. And we've definitely seen Russia do a lot of this. Okay, 105 drones were flying into Ukraine last night, and that's about what we've been seeing almost every single day uh, for well over a month now is upwards of almost 100 drones flying into Ukraine almost every single night. Uh, we have been reporting that quite a bit lately. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Ukraine came under attack once again. And uh, it's sad to hear about their their energy infrastructure, okay, because as far as we know, according to Vladimir Zelensky, 80% of their energy infrastructure is badly damaged, if not destroyed. So uh, Ukraine is walking into a very tough winter coming up here very soon as the temperatures, I'm sure, are already starting to slowly drop over there uh, inside of Ukraine. And it's going to get very cold over there pretty soon. And hopefully they'll have enough energy to sustain themselves through the winter. But it uh, looks like they're definitely going to be challenged when it comes to that aspect. OK, so that's going to be it for today's update. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.